A bill to regulate the use of social media as well as curb fake news on the internet has passed its second reading at the Senate. The Bill Protection from Internet Falsehood and Manipulations Bill 2019, sponsored by Mohammed Musa, was introduced into the Senate two weeks ago. Now, this comes a few years after a similar anti social media bill introduced in the 8th Senate's backed outrage across Nigeria. The second stage of the new bill was passed after lawmakers debated the details during plenary. Are there other hidden details in this bill that we need to know? Well, I still have my guests in the studio, John Wesley and Sama Delike, both political analysts. Gentlemen, thank you for staying with us. I'm going to start with you, John, this time. Um, I see that you know, you use social media, obviously. I'm sure we all use social media. Mm. We're always at our phones, you know, <laughs> tweeting or posting something. And this bill seeks to regulate social media as well as curb fake news, uh, according to what, you know, the members of the Senate have told us. And um, uh, so far, so good. This bill has gotten to its scale through its second reading, meaning that everybody in the House is not necessarily against it. But we all know how social media played a part in politics from 2015. It, it, it probably, maybe other politicians did not realize how powerful social media was mm. until 2015. But the same social media is being somewhat um, seen as an enemy of progress. Is this really what we need right now? <laughs> or are there other ways that they could go about you know, protecting the kind of information that is being disseminated, especially fake news. You know, for, for some of us who have seen the body language of the APC government from the end of the first administration or the first tenure into the second term, we're not surprised at this. You know, the other time... But it's not just the APC <laughs> that's on the floor of the National Assembly, is it? Well, they are cross-capited. They, they are all one. I don't. I don't see it as a two-party system here. It is. They are all. <laughs> they, 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 they are all sons of the same mother. You see, if Alajilai Mohammed, the Minister of Tourism, Minister of Information and Culture, who is also one of the backers of this bill, so to speak, had been, or, or better still, if the government of Jonathan, good luck Jonathan administration, during his, his own tenure, had introduced this bill during that period, there is no way, no way this APC government will come into power because they rode to power on the back of free speech. On the, this, we, we, all, we, all, we all recall, Alajilai Mohammed and the APC team were on a daily basis, even on a weekly basis, churning out data, both lies and correct things about the opposition until they got into power. So coming out when there is a cyber um, crime bill, when there, are, when there are existing laws against libel, slander, you know, freedom of information bill, acts, and all that, when these are existing, and then this was brought up at this time, and then of course overwhelmingly supported by these two houses, or at this point, I, I think it simply shows that number one, the Senate, even though, to be honest, to be fair, they are also passing other bills. For example, the president just just released um, six bills on, on aviation to the to the to the house today, and all that. It, it simply shows that they they are, they are feeling the heat on how their excesses are being broadcasted and showcased to the world by the democratized media. Because right now, even when you give examples of the West, of course, uh, Donald Trump that promulgated the fake news theory, he and his team did not in any, at, at that point in time promote or push an artificial media bill to the, to the US Congress. So the people who even own the platform, the people who understand the in-depth of how this works, they are not doing this. How, how, how come Nigeria? Come on. I, I think at this point now, this bill has been moved to the Senate Judiciary Committee in which the public hearings will be conducted. It's simply an opportunity for Nigerians to come out and make their views and hear their views, especially social media juggernauts, you know, across the board, and let the government know that, see, you don't need this right now. Get your acts together. When people are pushing false information, you push the right thing. And of course, use the existing laws to deal with it. And when you give terms and, um, and um, penalties like death by hanging, excuse me, really? Even murder 
and other criminal crimes. People are on death row. The, gov the governors cannot sign it. How much more people who you said are promoting this? So I think Nigeria should come out during the public hearing, which will start in the next few weeks, to talk sense into these leaders that, see, there are more pressing issues. Lagos is suffering under a very heavy burden of traffic. Put your attention on Lagos and, and other parts of the country and other infrastructure and leave this alone. This is not a priority right now. John Mercy, <laughs> um, some, some of the statements credited to the man who um, sponsored this bill, um, I'd like to quote him. He says, it is rather an opportunity to address the growing threats which, if left unchecked, can cause serious damage to our polity and disrupt peaceful coexistence. Uh, end of quote. I'm trying to, as a journalist, see where we have had anything close to what has happened in Rwanda, which is a classic example of a hate crime which led to the killing of almost the whole generation. Genocide. I was there. I saw it with my two eyes. I went to that museum. It's your life will never be the same. Mm. Have we ever had any hate speech on Twitter, Facebook, or social media that has led to the killings of people in Nigeria? And I'm not saying that we have to wait for that to happen, but what can we use to validate mm. this, the urgency, the sense of urgency with which the Senate is pushing this bill? All right, well, if you, if you ask me if you have ever had um, results based on social media you know, social media and uh, killings and all of that maybe because it's not being on the front line i'm very sure i'm very certain you do not see the comments on certain issues on social media i'm sure as a reader you would feel the tenacity of somebody commenting as if if probably the person had a gun you would kill the other person for bringing up such comments. We see that every day, even uh, on normal yeah, issues on normal that are not issues. about ethnicity. Uh -huh. so, this is what happens <clears throat> on social media. You understand? So, but I am of the, like you said, I am of the opinion that uh, it, it, it has done more good to us as a people than harm. However, it is very important that these checks come to place. Something happened recently <clears throat> and certain media houses even made it their headline. Some people concocted a story that was never in place and it went all over, all over. Everybody saw it as news. Where exactly? Yes. About, Where? About the president. Where? On social media. You know, about the president marrying another wife <laughs> and it went all over i mean all over and some still believe to today <clears throat> to today that that very much somebody sat right. down somewhere created the story <laughs> now take for instance that is something that could tear the entire home of an individual apart not the president if we were to be somebody else if we were to be maybe just the gm of a company and then it's the headline all over the place, maybe one of the leading multinational brands and all of that. And, you know, in this regard, you could put a check. But when you want to place a sanction, talking about... But there are the, checks. Aren't there checks? I mean, <laughs> no, no, as, see, as broadcast journalists mm. or even print, there's fact-checking. Right. You cannot carry your story without double-checking without getting other opinions, to be sure. What happened to and those... And also speaking to those involved. What... So those media houses yes. who carried that story, of course, yes. have to face the NBC. Yes. But I, do what, they what... need another social media bill or whatever mm -hmm. bill to I'm not, suppress I'm not, that? I'm not even... I'm the, the, the person, Musa, uh, Alaji Musa, who brought about the, uh, the, the bill or whatever. Uh, see, the thing is this. They do not need another one, but in the in the in the discretion or following the discretion of whoever sponsored the bill, he felt that another approach to put a quick check. If you look at something, in less than two weeks, we are already at the second reading 
we have had anti-corruption mm -hmm. bills and all of that FOI bills. that we have not had mm. even readings on. And this is taking the speed of light. Are you getting me? See, the truth of the matter is this. We may not want to acknowledge a few things, maybe because all of us, yes, we use social media. But as far as I'm concerned, Nigeria is not even mature to the point where you can even place a check on all of these things. What do we have to control all of it? Even in the countries where they have all the necessary watch to <laughs> control, to even see what you are, the intent of what you are trying to create and all of that, to put a halt to it, Nigeria doesn't have all of those things, you know. Let, let, end to end users and all of that. Okay, let's take a quick look at what happened on the floor uh, of the National Assembly today as that bill scaled through its second reading. It's not an attempt to stable free speech or dissenting views. It is rather an opportunity to address a growing threat which, left unchecked, can cause serious damage in our polity and disrupt peaceful coexistence. While the internet has democratized information, <clears throat> the fact remains that it has also been a weapon in the process. That is why governments across the world are trying to mitigate the risks associated with information transmission via internet networks by monitoring abuse, deliberate misconduct that is the essence of this bill. The advent of internet has provided humanity numerous benefits including instant access to information, knowledge and learning, connectivity, communication and sharing, collaboration, access to a global workforce, and the new frontiers for business and trade. I think all of us here must rise to support this bill, to pass it into law, at least to regulate one aspect of our lives that is negative and will have very serious and dangerous consequences on the lives of members of the society. Fake news is dangerous. The spread of falsehood is even more dangerous. Therefore, Mr. President, we must rise to the challenge of picking up the courage and the political will to be able to deal with this at its infancy before it develops into a canker worm that will consume the rest of the society. I not only oppose this bill, I condemn it in its entirety. This bill is an attempt to surreptitiously introduce the sanction into our laws. Based on our Constitution Section 39 that guarantees freedom of uh, information and freedom of uh, speech. There is a Cyber Crime Act that deals with this uh, issue. There are also laws in the land that have to deal with uh, false information, libel, slander, and uh, peddling of uh, so-called fake uh, news. Every person shall be entitled to freedom of, of expression including freedom to hold opinion and to receive and import ideas and information without interference. But subsection 3 says, after giving the right, it says nothing in this section shall invalidate any law that is reasonably justifiable in a democratic society. That's what the provision says, Mr. President. And that is the intent of the framers of our Constitution. I am not so happy that I stand today vindicated on the floor of this Senate regarding this law. And that was the Senate today, talking mm -hmm. about the social media bill. It seems to be getting a lot of support on the floor. But because we have just two minutes, gentlemen, I'll give you both two, uh, one minute each. It looks like you both are in agreement that this bill is not the solution to the problems that we have, because off the camera we were talking about forwarded messages right. and fake, you know, concocted messages. Mm -hmm. But if you are a frequent user of social media, there are advertisements on social media telling you what fake news is, what you shouldn't be forwarding messages that you're not certain of. And like I said earlier on, we have 
ethics when it comes to broadcasting or print media, we, there are rules and regulations, and if you breach that, then that's your cup of tea for the day. But what is the way forward in dealing with fake news in Nigeria and forwarded messages or people who are just trying to create some form of mess because it's going to benefit them? I'll start with you, John. One minute. Well, I, 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 I'm of the opinion, like I said before, the National Orientation Agency, uh, like I always say, they go to sleep after every election. You know, once elections are over, they sleep. And when they run their hearts, they run only on one television. They will, you will not see their hearts on any other television or radio or other platform, on just that one that most Nigerians don't watch. That's where they run I'm shaking their hearts. Yeah. So I, no, I'm, 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 that is so one-sided. No, it's not one-sided. It is very true. Let us tell ourselves the truth for once. What do you that, think that have only one minute, minute, please. Let us tell ourselves. That is where they will run it. Where my mother cannot see it. Yes, where my mother cannot see it. My grandmother in the village that we vote, she cannot see it there. <laughs> but somebody who is the local champion in the village who already saw a spam message from, from one platform that comes to tell her that what empire on Leko, which is not true. <laughs> we have, we should get to know that if she's not supposed to listen to some, somebody like that that is spreading fake news. The National Orientation Agency should wake up across board, just like we have poly units across Nigeria. Let us have NOA across all those units orientating people. And your time is over. For me, I believe moral suasion should um, work here. I I'll say let it run its course. Let's apparently the entire Senate and the House, they are all working in constant, constant executive. APC, everybody is thinking one way. Let it run its course. Let, let them go for the public hearing. Let Nigerians come, you know, hear their views. But I know something. We are very poor on enforcement. Let it, let it be, be passed into law. Then come and enforce it. And let's see what we happen there. We are waiting for them. Let's see how this will play out. Nigeria is an interesting country. Let's just keep playing drama. We'll be all right in the end. All right. It's been an interesting conversation. John Wesley, Sama Deleke, my guest today, our political analyst, and it's been uh, very intriguing. Ooh. And uh, I'm hoping that um, one way or the other we'll get solutions to all our problems. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the show. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I'll give you my take. The House of Representatives has criticized the recent report by the Independent Corrupt Persons and Related Offenses Commission, ICPC, which claims that about one trillion naira has been expended by lawmakers on constituency projects in the last 10 years. Lawmakers have said the report is misleading, false, mischievous, and did not take into consideration actual amounts released for the projects. The House stated that the report is capable of pitting Nigerians against lawmakers. <laughs> It is painful that whoever that emanated that report failed to tell Nigerians that yes, one trillion was released for the past 10 years. Budgeted, sorry. Budgeted for the past, because of the way I've seen the story, members appreciate the fact that I'm upset. I'm not happy because my members, this is capable of giving me bad names for my concerns. And I'm trying to claim. That the one trillion that was budgeted, that I can authoritatively say that not more than 40% was released. And the, the ICPC that made this report, that went through to investigate, failed to tell Nigeria the truth of how much that was actually transferred and released, and what was what, what up to this moment is the state of the project that the executive awarded. If in all the papers, particularly this day that I'm holding this morning, <laughs> there is one trillion wasted on constituency projects in 10 years, says Murari. Well, of course, Mr. President would have been responding with regard to the information given to him. I'm a student of public policy analysis. I understand that projects or policies of government go through interrogation. That they must go through interrogation with truth. They must go through interrogation with facts. These are words emanating from the report 
the report of ICBC. There are unintended consequences that could come out of it. You put people's well-being at risk. And that is my concern. It is, I feel it is okay. It is okay to use the National Assembly as a whipping boy. But let it be based on facts and not uh, alternative facts. The facts are easy to assess. We have the FOI bill, the Freedom of Information bill, where you could, SCPC could easily go to, they have all the powers and the tools of investigation, and look at releases as opposed to what has been budgeted for. Now, even the ICPC that has made the report, I don't think they would uh, appreciate if the House in exercise of its constitutional responsibility, did an oversight on ICPC based on the money that was budgeted as opposed to what was released to them. Well, it's time for my take. So more people have been killed in 2018 by herders, much more than the terrorist group Boko Haram has done over the years. And if we didn't have the statistics, let's just imagine if this report this index did not come to our attention. We probably wouldn't be alarmed because, you know, we somehow have become okay with people dying. Oh, eh, people died in May. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Last week, a couple of weeks ago, there was a report released that a lot of Nigerians who were victims of Boko Haram and insurgency and all of the terrorism in the northeastern parts of this country have been abandoned by government. Also, if that report did not come to light, we probably wouldn't be alarmed and we'll go about our businesses like nothing ever happened. It really makes me wonder why we have all of a sudden grown a thick skin. We've forgotten about how important and how valuable human life is in this part of the world. And so why do we have governments and those policies that are being made? The number one duty of every government, whether at the state, local or federal, is to protect lives first things first, lives, then property. But if lives are beginning to be taken, just snuffed out of our people without any regards or remorse, except it's the life of somebody very special, and then, oh, the nation will be in mourning, and then we will have high-powered delegations going to pay courtesy calls or condolence visits, the life of every Nigerian should be worth something. Whether you're rich, whether you're poor, whether you're lowly, we all should be valuable. And this goes to our governments. If you do not value us, then we will not value you. I am Mary Anacle. It's been Plus Politics. <laughs>